Hello and welcome to grammar class. We will get started shortly when students arrive in the class. Class will get started within a minute. Hello, Betty. How is everyone? Hello. Hi, Khalif. Hello there. How are things? Perfect, I would say. Today I'm feeling really good. Yeah, it's a nice day outside. Sorry, sir, I, I, I could not hear. It's a nice day outside. Well, it, it's spring here in Algeria, and uh, it has been sunny for a couple of weeks now. Well, it's, how about it's in Canada? Well, it's spring here too, and we've had snow up until last week. So. Yeah. It it t today is really the first sunny day, and I can look outside, and yeah, it's still sunny, so that's nice. The grass is starting to grow again. Good. The ground is no longer frozen. Why don't you say hi to everybody? Say hello to everybody in the class, Khalif. Hello, everybody. Hello, buddy. Hello, uh, Khalif. Hello. Come on, everybody. Say hello. 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 There we go. Let's be more friendly. Let's relax and enjoy the class and enjoy each other's company. It's more than just a place to come and learn. It's a good place to make friends as well. Yeah, of course. So, Khalif, you're from Algeria? Yes, oh, I'm in my neighborhood. I know. You're in North Africa, too. Yeah. Ah. Uh. So, uh, which country? Morocco. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, from the capital? No, um, I am in north of Morocco. I am near from Spain. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. My and, you're, and you're studying biology? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At university? Yes, you remind me. <laughs> I I have a good memory most of the times. Well, sometimes. <laughs> yes. And I like to take the classes with you, teacher. Well, I'm glad. We're going to have yeah. fun today. I didn't have time to put together a full lesson plan for grammar, so I thought we could just relax, have a conversation, get to mm -hmm. know each other, talk about our hobbies, mm -hmm. and just have fun. Yeah, it's good. Good. Now, Khalif, are you also in school? Yes, I'm a third year English student at my university, and uh, we basically focus on linguistics. Ah, mm. I like okay. this. I enjoyed descriptive linguistics. Yeah, well, to be honest, I'm not that interested in linguistics. I find it very, uh, I'm not going to say boring, but it is somehow difficult to deal with. I mean, social linguistics is much better than the, the general linguistic. Well, for me, you must understand it's my heritage, my history. So when I study English, it's more than just studying a language. It's studying 
a culture and the evolution of our language? I think uh, linguistic is very difficult uh, in the in Arabic or English. I I find that's very very difficult. Well, yeah, and you know what? That's a very good point. Um, I'm not sure what century it was, but the Middle East was essentially the center of education, civilization. It's where all the leading thinkers were, and if you wanted to learn and be smart, you went to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the block press was discovered by the uh, Europeans, the English, the French, the Germans. They discovered it from the Chinese. So one of the reasons why the Renaissance took off in Europe and not the Middle East was because English was a much easier language to put onto metal stones or metal stamps. But I mean, you mean before the Great Vowel Shift, right? Yeah, well, even after the Great Vowel Shift, English has only had 26 letters. There's no accents on it. So when you're printing, it's so very easy to do that. Now, what happened, I think you're talking about, it was just... Is it true? It just after Chaucer, I believe. In uh, Old English, they used to say, like, what, instead of saying what, for example? Well, I don't know Old English too well, but Middle English would sound like this. One, that apple, the shura sutta, the trot of matcha, pass it to the oh. house. Like German. And bath at every vine and switch liqueur. Which yeah. Engendre... yeah, and it is German. English is German. Yeah. It's like yeah. Canadian pronunciation. I've heard like words like name, they would say like Nami. Nami, Macken instead of Macon, or Macken. Melodia. Mm -hmm. I think also in, in terms of meaning, some words have changed uh, their meanings. The, for instance, the word silly. Is that mm -hmm. correct, sir? Oh, well, English is always in a state of flux. Um, you don't even have to go back in time to understand this. All you have to do is look at England and North America. Words in England have a different meaning than the words in North America. Yes. Not all of them. Well, here in Morocco we study British uh, English, North American English. Well, that makes sense because you probably do most of your business with Europe. <clears throat> yeah, the same thing can be said about Algeria. We've been studying RP in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, this is we're well, not really studying RP because when we deal with, I mean, uh, when we study oral expression, which is a class that we have uh, three weeks, uh, three times a week, sorry, we deal with American accents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, son, we talk a little different when we speak American. Yeah, <laughs> it's like cowboy. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. A little more sharper, a little quicker in our speech. Well, that depends on where you are in the U.S. Yeah. Yes. I, I said uh, even uh, uh, every teacher has a different accent. Of course. Well, technically, no. We have different dialects. Yes. Okay, Variety. you would have an accent speaking English because English is my native language. I might have a different dialect. Okay, so, but but English comes from England, so you would have an accent too. No, I wouldn't. And actually, I am British. You're oh, not okay. Canadian, teacher. Let me show you something. Hold on a minute. Okay. Teacher is in the house again. In the house. Uh, your boss parts. Yeah, now that could be anybody, so let me. Gotta be careful because it's the internet. I'll cover the personal information, but there you go. So you're British, huh? So let me. That's right. That's right, and Mike. Uh, you live in uh, Canada? Yeah, I see Canada. You got the two nationalities? Yes, sir. Okay. Teacher? Yes. 
Well, I'm really interested in the Scottish accents. I've been watching videos of all of the Scottish accents all the day, and I found it very hilarious. I mean, the way they speak English may sound not English indeed. Well, you got to be careful. Right, that's not necessarily Scottish, eh? Hi. Right, now listen here, eh? So if you're going to talk, one thing you got to be careful of, if you say, if you're talking about another accent, especially if there's a large group of people around, you don't want to say it sounds silly. You might want to say it sounds interesting. Because a Scots, a Scotsman is not somebody you want to irritate. Yeah, they can be sure. a very proud people, so if you make fun of their language or call them British, they might be wanting to fight you. Mm. But don't worry, they don't fight dirty, it's mostly fists. <laughs> and or even call them British, they might be wanting to fight you. Okay, Naja's so we've got to... Hold on, Naja, could you close yes, the yeah. lobby window, cool. please, because we're getting an echo. Yeah. yeah. Because of that it's lobby window, I'm going to mute problem. you for now. Oh. Okay, so, yeah, there's different... Even from one part of a state or province to another, there'll be differences in pronunciations, in, in dialects. That's normal. So, so you don't have an accent because you're British, but... If you were not British, you would have an accent even though you live in Canada. Um, you are from Canada. I anyway. asked this when I was in college, and my understanding is generally, if you're talking to the average person, it's an accent. Nobody will say dialect. It's only if you go to school, university, you learn that the proper word is dialect. Okay. But whether you're speaking American English, Canadian English, or British English, you're still speaking English. Yeah. No and the pronunciation is still pretty much the same. If you listen to BBC English, mm -hmm. for example, the news, and CNN English, again, the news, you'll notice there's a very slight difference. But that's because they adopt the standard English. Well, the they didn't adopt American it. One. They didn't adopt it. You've got to understand that a lot of people who settled the United States were British people. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so it's not that necessarily they adopted, they carried forward what they had. No, but I mean the news. They they have to adopt like some kind of a neutral accent. You yes. cannot really sound like a southern, I don't know, southern American. When you're just like in the news, you cannot really do that. Which is what they call a standard English. Yeah, yeah. standard English. That's right. And neutral. what... Hold on, let me answer yeah, this, okay. and then you can have the floor. Um, one thing I've noticed in the U.S., a lot of Canadians find their way into American shows and as newscasters because the Canadian dialect is very, very similar to a northern standard American dialect. Yeah. Do you guys say out and about? A lot? Out and about, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, eh? Today's and class is on Canadian accents, eh? Okay, let's get started, eh? <laughs> okay, this is my brother Bob, eh? And he... Oh, shut up, eh, you hoser. <laughs> and teacher, you know some words in uh, France or no? En français, un uh, jeu yeah. un très peu. Un peu? Je, un peu. Je parle français très mal. No, ah. c'est bien. No, c'est mal. <laughs> no, très très bien. <laughs> You know, you know, teacher? Uh, Hold on, let's go something. to Khalif, because Khalif has been trying to speak, and then we'll go to Wong. Khalif, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, we've been speaking about RP and Standard English. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, is there a real difference between them? I mean, we studied there, but basically oh, yeah. I saw no difference between them. Oh, no, there's a huge difference between Cockney and... Uh, um, standard English, huge. No, 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 yeah. no, no, sir, sorry, sorry, not the Cockney and the Standard English, the RP. The RP and Standard English. Oh, yeah, the RP, um, yeah, there may be. Isn't it basically, basically the same thing? Well, from what I've been told what RP is, yes. Um, I didn't know what RP was until somebody told me, because when I went to school, we didn't talk about that. There was... 
we refer to what is the Queen's English or BBC English. Okay. Like for example, my mom speaks with the same similar dialect to the Queen. Mm -hmm. And the BBC English is a slightly different sound. Uh, okay. Can you say me what's the mean difference between uh, England uh, English or Union Kingdom English and American English? Yes, because there's several. You... There's several differences. Let me start off. For one, in spelling, now let me erase the board here. Mm -hmm. And this all started because America felt a little inferior to Britain. They felt that their culture wasn't being able to grow because everything was British. They they felt like a teenager feels like when a teenager is growing up and trying to get out on its own and trying to create an identity for itself. So the Americans, or not the Americans, some authors at the time thought this would be a great idea. And as you can tell by the difference in spelling, it took off. But instead of dramatically changing the language, it only went so far. So for example, <coughs> A lot of words that end in O-U-R in American or in the American lexicon, they will spell O-R. But the funny thing is the Space Shuttle Endeavor was O-U-R, which was the British spelling. So go figure. Um, defense. C and C and S. We have R E and E R. Now in French it's also R E and in British English it's R E, but in American English it's E R. Yeah. Jewelry has two L's in it. But scheduled only has one. Okay. A lot of uh, words in English will have double L's, whereas in American English they'll have one. Grammar. There's so few differences that I just don't even remember them. There's some minor difference in grammar, but not enough that your average person in business could tell the difference. Words, I could say plastered. Plastered? Yeah. Well, now we're getting into more of what I would consider slang. Yeah, in, in America they say band-aid. In England they say plaster. Um, yeah, I don't remember that. Now I know that in, if, here, here's a big one. If you hurt yourself and you want to go see the doctor, in North America you'll say the clinic or doctor's office or just go see the doctor. In England you'll say let's go to the surgery. Oh. Surgery? Yeah, it's called the surgery. Whereas in North American English, the surgery is actually yes. an act yeah. you, where you, they That's... cut you open. They're surgeons. Yeah. They cut you open. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. Other terms that can get you in trouble in Algeria, if you ask the teacher, do you have an extra rubber, no one's going to laugh at you. Same with Britain. Oh, yeah, rubber. Really. It means condom, right? No, it doesn't. It means eraser. I mean, in, uh, in America. Well, see, that's the problem. In Britain, it means eraser, but they don't use the term eraser. So rubber is what you r have on the end of a pencil to rub things out, right? Mm -hmm. In Canada and America, it means condom. You can imagine the embarrassment of a nine-year-old <laughs> asking a teacher for a rubber. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> that would be very embarrassing. Not for me, it wasn't, because I knew what I wanted. <laughs> mom and mom. M U M is British, M O M is American. Yeah. Other words that you can get yourself in trouble with. In England, if I want a cigarette, I won't ask for a cigarette because nobody says cigarette. 
I would say, can do you, can I have a fag? And that's spelled this way. Oh, I know, fag. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Right, and it's normal. Fag in Britain means cigarette. If you're not sure, watch plenty of British shows where they talk about cigarettes. They'll never say cigarette. They'll say fag. However, in North America, that is slang for a homosexual. Oh, yeah. For God's sake. Now, in... To confuse things even more, in the UK, <laughs> fag also means homosexual too, but mostly it means cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see if you're going to be working for a company, it's very important yeah. to know your locale that you're going to be advertising in or writing or corresponding to. Yeah. It's not enough to know how to speak the language. You need to choose the right words. As you say, the culture, right? The what? The culture. The, uh, every country or culture. Every... Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm so, I'm British. I've been raised in a British Irish family, and I've spent most of my life living in North America. And I'll tell you, it's. In the U.S., there you run into most of your problems with words because generally in a lot of places they have one word for something. They don't have a whole variety of words. And so I might be used to using several different synonyms and in the city I can use different synonyms too and everybody pretty much understands what I'm saying. But in the US, if you use different synonyms, they kind of go, oh, that's very cute. How Canadian or wherever you're from, how British. Okay, so it's very important to know. Oh, in England they say lorry instead of saying trunk. Truck. Uh, truck. Yeah, they'll say yeah, truck too, but you're right, lorry. Lorry. Whereas in Canada and America, that's a person's name. <laughs> yeah. In Canada, you guys say in Canada they say serviette instead of napkins. No, we say both. Oh, okay. We might say serviette, napkin, paper towel, Kleenex, um, bib. Bib is more baby related. Yeah, you use all of them. Now, a serviette generally is a paper towel. Um. What's the other one for the cloth? I forgot the other one. There's so, so many words. Let me look up my synonyms here. Thesaurus. Mm. Okay, it's having trouble getting out there. But yeah, there's many different ways of saying the same thing. Okay. Teacher, may I ask? Uh, let, me, let, me, let Juan go ahead, because Juan has been trying to speak for a while. Juan, go ahead. No, okay. No, no. It's not me. No, what? Go ahead, Juan. You did try to say something earlier. No, no. Okay. Well, go ahead then, Khalif. Well, one of our teachers once said it is good to have some kind of accent, but it would, I mean, especially an American one or a British one, in generally speaking. But he, said, he also said that it would be much better to have some kind of mixture between both when speaking English. In, the, in this case, everybody should be able to understand what you say. I mean, uh, is it uh, really, uh, uh, I mean, reliable to do so? Well, I'll answer yes and then let me explain. Um, and maybe I'll pick on... Sir, sure. sure. I, mean, I mean... Let me pick on Suad for a minute. Okay. Um, like many girls, Suad, I'm sure you like to wear many different clothes. Yes. Yeah, you like to dress up, you like to have your own unique style, and for special occasions, you like to dress up really nice. Yes, okay. all the time, yes. For guys, we love our cars, and some of us like them so much, we, we change the color, we change engine components, whereas to others, it's just a car, but for a few select, we understand why you need to do that. Language is the same thing. Is It is expressive. 
it's important that you speak clearly, that you enunciate your words. Outside of that, having an accent sets you apart from others. If you yeah. spent your entire life growing up in one town, you'll sound like everybody in that town. However, if you move from the UK to somewhere in North America or even Algeria, Spain, or New Zealand, you will stand out. You're different. Mm -hmm. And people will automatically yeah. assume one of two things, different in a good way or different in a bad way. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with having That's... an accent, but what tends to happen is if you live in a place long enough, you will adopt the accent of where you move to. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen to me long enough, you'll notice a bit of American in there, some British, mm -hmm. and some Canadian, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> and teacher, I find the uh, I find Abdul Qadir uh, Khalaf. It's uh, he he's very good in English. He speaks very well. I'm jealous. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the secret <laughs> to speaking well? I don't speak very well. I'm I don't speak very fluently. Sometimes I find words. Sometimes I lost. I I like <laughs> like. <laughs> Like now, I don't. Yes, I don't have. I don't know. I don't have. Uh, I don't um, introduce uh, English. I, well, I find some tr uh, troubles. You know, I well, think that's. I don't practice English uh, all day. You know, because here in Morocco we speak Arabic, Moroccan Arabic, or French. We study French, a lot of French. Yes. We are good in French, but uh, English, not not very. Well, a couple of things. One, speak it a lot. Um, when you get home, Klingo classes are free. Take them. Take a couple. Mm -hmm. Watch some British, American, or Canadian TV shows. There's a lot of great shows out there. If you want to learn yeah. something, for example, you're studying medicine, then maybe mm -hmm. watch the TV show House. Yeah. yeah. Or BBC Horizon, which is a science show that has health related documentaries on it. Or PBS yeah. Nova. But uh, but here the problem is his it's it translates in Arabic. I see uh, all times I see the translation. Not I don't hear and I tr I don't try to to find to to know uh, by by myself, no. Well, All download time, from I the internet. Just, yeah, okay. Download from the internet. Uh, BBC World Service is probably a free radio station in most parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, but so, also, yeah. to add one thing else to add, mm -hmm. even I can't remember my words all the time. But I have a little secret that makes me seem smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. Which is? Which is? <laughs> Tell me, please. <laughs> See, it, I just did it. <laughs> please. And it was very effective. I just did it right there. You did. You missed it. What was it that what? I did? What? I have trouble in the past. <laughs> I stopped speaking. Ah. I said I have something that can help you in those situations, and then I didn't say a word. And you said, well, what is it? Please tell me. It was silence. Mm -hmm. So Just listening. It's very effective. If you speak very, very fast like this all the time and you constantly go that fast, people mm -hmm. will get a headache. They'll tune you out. They'll stop. Mm -hmm. When you have trouble remembering a word, pause. Talk a little mm -hmm. slower. Be dramatic. Say, okay. oh, what's that word? Pause as though you own the room. Mm -hmm. That will help you. And tr I'm sure if you try it, you'll say, hey, this really does work. People will listen more intently to you. Well, so this can be very useful for me personally because we study a class called TEFL, which, is, which means which is an abbreviation that stands for teaching English as foreign language. 
and we always uh, do some kinds of oral presentations and as you said sometimes you may not find the appropriate words to express what we want to actually say well exactly it's very effective for public speaking in your language or in English when you're at work or giving a presentation next in school use that pause effectively speak slower for some strange reason people think you're smarter they listen more intently mm -hmm. and once you learn to use pauses or silence then learn to emphasize certain words to be more effective another thing Sue Ed, I want to mention I teach on Wednesdays at this same time a pronunciation class yeah. being able to speak English effectively and having a large vocabulary of vocabulary of words are two different things what I do in that class is I focus on various word pairs such as light or light sad or no what's I forgot sad or sought Mm -hmm. And as we go through these words, each student at a time, some of you will nail it perfect. Others will get it wrong. And when you get it wrong, I practice with you a little bit. Sir, is there any difference? Uh, Hold on. Different... Let me finish. I okay. practice with you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll turn around and get it perfectly, and then you'll get that sound correct. Other times you won't because it's not a native sound in your language and I'll give you a homework assignment so Suad take that class every uh, Wednesday okay I try to keep it okay. go ahead please Khalif yeah uh, the word the words you've just written I mean the first pair light and light is there a difference when it comes to pronouncing them light light no they're the same uh, yes and okay I thought there would be some kind of difference. no 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 um, I meant it to be that way but I was thinking quicker than I was typing so I actually typed the same word twice even though it's a different spelling okay. um, so if I actually go because I have my lesson plan here <clears throat> Oh. So maybe sometimes I will ask some help for uh, concerning the lesson plan because we are really studying TEFL and sometimes you find it's very difficult to prepare, I mean, lectures. Sure. Now somebody just asked me to say two words. Five, fight. Five, v, v, five. Five, five. Uh, f, I, v, five. Right. Fight. Five. Fight. Oh, we got a few here. Food? Good. I mean, look at my lips here. It's like I'm going to kiss somebody. Food? Good Food. is very different. G good. Yeah. Good. 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 Like this? Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> good. Yeah. Now we got some students that are being quiet. We got Seda, who it looks like she's sleeping. Right down there. <laughs> <laughs> there we yeah. Vinny, Vinny's been very quiet. Normally, Vinny speaks a lot more. Can I can I ask you something? You just did. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> should I should I pronounce other or other? Other, or well, now you're getting into the difference of dialects. I say other. Okay, so for me normally I will just say other. The other day, that's normally how I would speak it. Okay. So okay. on some. some if I was word. British, I might say other. So it's the same. Um, the beginning of the pronounce. It's the same of odd. I mean odd. Odd. Uh, other. Odd, other. It sounds different to me. Let me watch other. Because I could oh. say like 
Odd, odd brother. brother. No, but you have the T H. Anyway. Yeah, well, and that's it. See, I'm I'm trying to think as I do it. Uh, Sir, other, other, other. Yeah, it does sound exactly alike. It's the T H that's throwing me off. Mm. Sir. Yes. I've noticed also some kind of uh, uh, difference, uh, as uh, our mate just said, in terms of pronunciations. In words that are pronounced in American English with the upside, upside, upside down uh, A, I mean, phonetically speaking, I mean, the word, for instance, top. In England, is, is it pronounced top? Yeah. Talk. So this here? No, uh, T O P. Oh, top. Yeah. Is it is it the same? I mean, I, I, I think some Americans say it's top, while British people say top. Well, and see, this is tough because I am British and I'm used to hearing British English. I don't always notice when British English is being spoken. It's just normal for me. Oh, okay. um, but now that I think about it, we would say top, top of the morning to you, top versus bottom, top. If you say top in England, people are going to understand you. If you say top in America, people are going to say understand you. The differences you're noticing are related to dialects or accents. When it comes to international phonetics, they're designed to help you speak the word in a standard way. Sir, and once some, some American people pronounce the the T between two, two vowels as a soft D. Is it an easy to understand for British people? Give me some examples. I mean, instead of saying pretty, you say pretty. Uh, well, also, you're, what's happening is you're also touching on something else, which is a, how trailing consonants are very lazy in North America. We don't say mountain, we say mountain. mountain. Okay. To me, that's incorrect. The T is not voluntary. If you listen to the news, they don't do that. Mountain has a T. It is not silent. But many people will say mountain. So you should say pretty, but it probably gets slurred a little bit in speech and becomes pretty. Yeah. So, so despite the fact that well, the books that, uh, that I have checked say that when the T is located between two vowels, it should be pronounced as a soft D. I think it sounds more like an R instead of D. Pretty. Well, let's take a look. This is going to go down a whole different line of discussion here. Oh, that's backwards. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. We're all familiar with the ED prefix, suffix, I mean. Okay, this has three sounds tied to it. Two of them you're familiar with. The T, the D, and id. Okay. So the ed suffix has those three sounds. Okay. Depending on the word, you might worked, right? I'll, I'll give you a lesson here you can take back with you. Oops. <coughs> So let's take a look at a couple of words here. Because depending on the word, the, 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 the sound changes. Here we have ended, expected, invited, printed, hated. We're not saying ed. It would be ended, expected ed, invited ed, printed ed, hated ed. It doesn't sound right. So with these words, we use the id sound. Ended. Something like that. And id. 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 Ended. Ended. Yeah, just say, for example, 
it's like you're saying <coughs> two separate sounds and it and it and it yeah now let's look at these words here if you try to use the it sound Rony. open it learn it realize it breathe it change it it doesn't work except for learn it it's the only exception here learned maybe well yeah. it's learned it's the d sound yeah but you can use this one nobody does well that's a different word i'm talking about just the ones we have we have opened learned okay. realized breathed changed but again, if you go around the English-speaking world, some people will say it with a T, opened, learned, realized, breathed, yes. changed. You don't always hear that hard D definition. Sometimes it'll be a T sound. So it's wrong, but they say, but they speak like that. Well, yes, but you probably don't want to tell them that they're wrong, <laughs> right? See, your challenge, because you're learning a new language, you have one mark against you. You have an accent. So if you don't say it properly, it is a lot harder for them to understand you, even though they're not saying it properly. What's so you, you have to overcome the accent. So that's why when you're learning to speak English, it's very helpful to reduce your accent so it's easy for others to understand you. Keep in mind... All, most of the times when you speak English, it's not going to be a native speaker you're speaking to. It's going to be speaking to somebody else who speaks English as a second language. English is the international language of business, commerce, shipping. You're going to fly at 747, you better know how to speak English because that's what the airports speak. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's why English is so important. It's not because of a small island of 50 or 60 million people speak it or because the US speaks it, it's because the rest of the world has adopted it as a second language. Yeah, yeah, it's an international language. Sorry? It's an international language, so you can communicate everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most countries, not all, but in most countries when people learn a second language, they choose English. No. Which, I said most, which makes <laughs> English the, the most popular. <laughs> I said most. You're one of 200 plus countries. That is why you're speaking English or learning English because it is the most popular language in the world as a second language. Mm -hmm. If you're a Chinese and you speak another language, chances are it's English. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, and um, verbs like miss, like uh, that it ends with s. You should say missed, right? Instead of saying missed, for example, this, for instance. What's going on? <laughs> you guys hearing that too? Yes, I can. Uh, that's Anderson. Anderson, I don't know what's going on, but we have to mute you because we're getting hey, a lot of noise and we're missing what you're, what others are saying. Missed. Missed. Yeah. yeah, I say it with a T sound. Missed. Can you do? Have you have have you ever heard people saying missed instead of missed? Yeah, I wouldn't pay attention to it. If it's close enough, I'm focusing on the message, not how they say individual words. And here, here's what's important here. English is a form of communication. Unless you're going to become a descriptive linguistics professor or something like that, you're not going to have, for general speaking, you're not going to have to worry about subtle differences like that. So here's an important thing here. We have communication. Okay. Okay. If you, I'm going to keep oh you on God. mute. If you uh, make noise again, I'm going to have to block you. I'm sorry. All right. So here we have Juan. See, 
got Juan's hair. <laughs> and over here. Rene. No, not Rene. Because I can communicate with Rene very well. Did you block it? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I just, if I, if you can't be respectful in class and keep your background noise down by keeping yourself on mute, I understand that if you've got noisy backgrounds and you need to speak and speak, I understand the noise then. But if you're not speaking, there's no reason why you can't have yourself muted. Okay, so we have Suad here. And they're having a conversation. Okay. So Juan says something to Suad. Suad says something back to Juan. Are they communicating? Yes. Yes. They might be. Now, for example, I'm having a conversation with Suad, and I'm talking to her. I'm talking about Top Gear, the best car show in the world. And Suad's saying, yes, but um, I, need to, uh, I need to go to class soon. I've got my classes. And I keep talking about Top Gear. I'm talking, talking, talking. And I'm not listening to Suad. And then Suad stops listening to me. We're not communicating. I'm talking. Mm-hmm. In the communication cycle, we have something called feedback. Yeah. Okay, and what we're trying to send is a message. When we speak, we're sending messages. And then we listen to hear. If we're good communicators, we listen for feedback to ensure that the person we're speaking to understands. Mm -hmm. Some people say, you understand. Most people say yes. So we might ask a different question. Well, how did you do this before, or how does this help you? We ask questions where they must give us something other than a yes-no answer. But here's where it gets difficult. We have something called, what do you think this is? Mm. Noise. 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 Okay. Hi, teacher. Like this? It's noise. Welcome, Slim. So we have a communication going on. There is feedback. They are communicating. But when there's a lot of noise, it makes it hard to understand the message or hear the message. And it makes it hard for us to hear the feedback. So for example, in class here, if we have a student that's in a loud area and there's noise, well, as a speaker, I find it very distracting because I'm listening for you guys and I'm hearing this noise so I can't speak as clearly. And you guys, you're trying to hear me and understand me, but there's all this noise and you can't communicate well. You can't understand. So that's yeah. why I'm very strict. If there's a lot of background noise, I'll say, please mute yourself. And after two or three warnings, if that doesn't happen, you get blocked. It's just not fair to everybody else. Well said, sir. You're welcome. So I learned this in descriptive linguistics. Just keep in mind that if you're talking to somebody and they're nodding and saying yes, that uh, does not mean they understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> in a lot of cultures, it's polite to say yes, even when you disagree, right? Yes. Yes, why not? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, but not. <laughs> so keep that in mind. So if we're talking about descriptive linguistics and I want to find out if you know something, I'll ask you a specific question where you can't where you can't give me a yes or no answer. No. Okay. <laughs> this is a very interesting conversation. Yesterday, yesterday we were talking about fishing. Fishing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about fishing. Well, I I, I had I showed my fishing rod, and uh, I also showed um, I built a fishing site because I like fishing, and yes. I don't get to fish anymore. So I showed everybody the site, and if you like fish, salmon, trout, whatever, 
I built that site. And uh, that was an interesting conversation. Today we're talking about descriptive linguistics, which is very interesting. But this is kind of a segue because coming up in an hour, we're going to have a conversation or a class. Business class. Mm, business class, but it's going to be discussing medical terminology. Medical? When? In one hour from now. <clears throat> okay. In, in 10 minutes. So what we will do is, well, what I'll do is I'll come to class with some vocabulary, but I'll let you ask me questions too. We can have it as a very free-flowing class like today, or I can drive and throw out new words for you guys. This is going to be interesting, medical terminology. Yeah. Sorry, but what does this term mean? What does what term mean? I mean, medical terminology. Um, terms, phrases, words, vocabulary. Well, yeah. Hey, teacher, do you like house? I love house. <laughs> I should say I love house MD. Mm -hmm. He's house. British, you know. He's anatomy. Yes. Yeah. Hugh Laurie is British. Laurie? The, how's the name? The... Yeah, the the actor or the the character House is played by Hugh Laurie, who is very British. Uh, yeah. He's British. Oh yes. You're serious? Okay, you guys want to watch a YouTube video? He has like a yeah. Oh, okay, man. hold on. Let me find this. Sir, is is this? Uh, I look. His dialect like is so American. No. Well, yeah, no. Hold on a minute here. One day, he has been invited to a TV show, and he had to try to f find out the meaning of some pure slang. Here we go, guys. Nice. Slang. Sorry to okay. cut you off. I want everybody to watch this video. I'm going to paste the link in Kalingo, in the Kalingo area on the right. Here we go. Let's all watch this. You can hear him speak with his normal British accent. <laughs> He's a little younger here, too. Let's check it out. <laughs> okay. A few of you are just listening to the end of that. Yeah. That is how he normally speaks. Mm -hmm. And no, he's not a real doctor. He's a very real actor and a comedic actor at that. He was not famous at, at that time in France, I think. Well, he was also in another show that um, I used to watch when I was younger. Black Adder. He's pretty popular in England. He was in many, many shows before House. Uh, and most of these shows never reached America. British and American humor, it's very different. 
mm. has been living in the United in the United States for quite long. Well, I, I, well, he was doing house, but he would go back to England after the shooting. But one thing I've noticed is over the eight years, his British accent has kind of trailed off a bit. He doesn't sound so British anymore. He sounds more mid-Atlantic. It's not Mr. Wilbur, Black uh, Idol. Sorry? Black Idol. What about Black Adder? Sorry. Oh, the two are working together. Rowan, uh, Rowan Atkinson and uh, Rowan Atkinson. Yes, Mr. Bean. <laughs> yes. Or some strange faces he does. There's another link to Hugh Laurie in 2012, and you can hear his accent has changed a little bit, or his dialect, I should say. Even for myself, my. I picked up so many different dialects over the years. Until somebody's watching that. Mm. Actor Jesse Spencer did have MD. Yes, that's right. Jesse Spencer is Australian, but he didn't try to hide that he was Australian. Whereas House had to be American for the show. So he spoke American. <laughs> didn't English. speak British at all. Like you, you speak English. I mean, well, I certainly do. I am English after all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Did you hear about uh, the explosion of wow. <laughs> International man of mystery wow. and intrigue. Did you hear about uh, when you show me, show me uh, this uh, passport, I think about MacGyver. Did you hear about it? About MacGyver? No. What happened? Was it something recently in the news? Not so in the news, but uh, did you see it before? I'll know it. I'll use it to watch. Oh, that was a long time ago. I don't remember anything from MacGyver. <laughs> the two possible. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, it's Mauricio, amazing, take care, thing. buddy. Mauricio has been hiding in the lobby today. So, who's going to come to my class on business English coming up in one hour? I think me. Good, good. good. Now, you guys are all aware that we have a Facebook group, correct? Yes. Good. So we got the Facebook group, and you can also find us on Google Plus, and yeah, pretty well. That's it. Um, I will let you in on a little bit of a secret here. I have a website that has some useful learning materials, but I'm so busy that I haven't had a chance to write too much. Um, that site doesn't really pay, whereas the phishing site, I get some money from that, some income, so I spend a bit more time developing that site. Okay. There's only so many hours in the day, and I've got three jobs. Yeah, because you're married? No, no, just because I like to stay busy. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> In fact, I need to cut back on the amount of time. I probably, when I, in a, maybe a couple of months, I'll probably cut down my teaching hours to maybe seven hours a week instead of 13. Because, well, when you're married, you need to be able to spend some time with your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point of getting married, right? <laughs> Might as well stay single. Who here is married? Me. I got 25 years old married. I'm not uh, cursed yet. <laughs> cursed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If you don't find the right girl, you will be cursed. So make sure you find the right one. I don't even have a girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Silence is better. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, isn't it strange how this internet 
technology brings people together from all over the world. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, my wife is working, Daniela. Or Danielle. I keep saying Daniela, I don't know why. She's, she's working so I can stay at home here and play. <laughs> no, <lucky>. not true. <laughs> this is my second job today. Once I'm done here, I have another job to work on. Then I come back, teach a class, and then i got to prepare some other stuff, and it never ends. And tomorrow yeah, I'm working from well. home, but that really doesn't affect you guys. It just gives me a bit more free time between classes. Teacher, will be there any classes tomorrow? Yes, two classes. Pronunciation and yeah. current events. Current events is kind of like this class. We just talk. We discuss yeah. things that are going on around the world. Spontaneously. Yeah, I, I like to keep it to things that are positive in nature. All right, Danny. I like to keep things that are... I don't like to talk about war. I don't like to talk about bombings or that kind of stuff or people who get in gruesome accidents. I like to keep it relatively on the positive side of news. Yeah, okay. There, the, the, I think there are more positive things than bad. There are a lot more positive things, but unfortunately... Most news doesn't focus on those positive things. Yeah. I don't like watch movie uh, news. I don't. I, I don't watch the news anymore myself. I have an iPad, and what I do is I kind of choose what news I want to read, like science, technology, that kind of stuff. Well, guys, I, I, I like Star Trek, or I like Stargate more than Star Wars. But, I don't know, so I said... 